हेलो फ्रेंड वेलकम टू मरी इंजीनियरिंग हब दिस इज नाइटर चीफ इंजीनियर रवि गुप्ता टुडे वी गोट टॉक अबाउट मार्पोल सेवेंटी थ्री एनएक्स वन इंट्रोडक्शन सो दिस विल बी द इंट्रोडक्शन वीडियो ऑफ द मार्पोल एनएक्स वन आई एम गोट मेक द सीरीज ऑफ वीडियो अबाउट द मार्पोल एनएक्स वन कवरिंग ईच एंड एवरी टॉपिक फ्रॉम बेसिक टू द एडवांस सो प्लीज रिमेन ट्यून आई गारंटी यू विल लर्न अ लॉट सो In today video we'll talk about what are the application of Marple Annex 1 where the Marple 1 Annex 1 apply after that we'll see what are the exemption waiver and what are the equivalent of the Marple Annex 1 after that we'll see that how the oil pollution can be prevented on board and what precaution we can take to prevent the oil pollution so this video is going to be interesting please tune till last you will learn a lot friend marine engineering hub is a platform which make the video like this which will be beneficial for examination purpose so please encourage us by subscribing and please to share our video so that more friend can come to know about this platform friends marine engineering hub has started the membership if you want to join you can join and you can enjoy the exclusive perks so let's start the today video where the marpol annex 1 can be applied so the application of marpol annex 1 are basically is to all ships tanker unless otherwise specified it means the marpol annex 1 is applied to all ship as well as also to the tanker if the ship is having a space of aggregate capacity greater than 200 meter cube in that case they have to follow this regulation it means that you have a tanker ship you have to follow this regulation but if you don't have a tanker ship but if you have a space of having greater than 200 meter cube in that case you should have a segregation of oil and ballast slop tank you will have a restriction on the length of a cargo tank you will have a particular discharging arrangement you should have a odm cs you should have a interface detector you should have a discharge criteria for a cargo space and you should have a cow operation and if your tank capacity is greater than 200 meter cube but less than 1000 meter cube in that case it may happen that regulation 29 or 31 and 32 means slop tank this and this odm cs and interface detector are exempted and you can discharge it to the sewer reception facility your waste so if anybody asks you that where the marpol annex one apply so you should say it apply to all ship and tanker and if you have a if you have a tanker in that case it will of course apply if you don't have a tanker but if you have a aggregate capacity of greater than 200 meter cube in that case you have to follow all this and if your capacity is greater than this but less than 1000 meter cube in that case certain exemption is provided like odmcs slop tank and interface detector you can give it to the reception facility after that if your ship is covered by the annex 2 cargo means if your cargo is covered by annex 2 is an oil tanker in that case also this annex apply it means if the cargo is covered by the annex 2 but it is carried in a oil tanker in that case it also apply okay now if your ship is constructed before 1982 and having dead weight tonnage of greater than 4000 ton 40000 ton in that case instead of segregated ballast tank you can provide crude oil washing or clean bilge tank okay now if your ship is engaged in a within a port or within a special area then imo have certain limitation made by the imo if your ship is all the ballast water and tank washing are retained on board can be also transferred to the reception facility for a certain type of ship if it is trading in a particular area and after that all the entry it need to be recorded in a oil record book part 1 and part 2 okay and the ipv certificate is endorsed accordingly okay so this is the thing where we now know where the annex 1 apply so it apply to all ship tanker 
it apply to this capacity it apply also to the annex 2 cargo if it is carried oil tanker and it also apply to the ship if it is constructed before like this and this okay now now let's see what are the exemption waiver and equivalent means what is the exemption now suppose if the flag state may exempt hydrofoil type of ship air cushion vehicles or near surface craft submarine craft etc which cannot comply with certain provision of this annex it means that certain provision of this annex cannot be complied by this hydrofoil air cushion ship like all that so they are exempted from that but you may be waive certain requirement may be waived if you fill up certain criteria what is that that if you are covering from point A to point B means if your voyage if your voyage is coming from point A to point B you are going and this distance is less than 72 hour less than 72 hour if you are moving from point A to point B and the duration is less than 72 hour in that case they may waive up the requirement of slop tank ODMCS and interface detector if your tanker is moving from point A point B which is within the 50 mile of the nearest land in that case also you will wave off if you are trading only between the port of a flag state in that case also you will wave off so in this case what you have to do as you are not using slop tank ODM CSA interface detector you have to retain all your oily mixer in the onboard and that need to be where it, it need to be go it need to be go to the reception facility so if in the examination they ask you what are the wave requirement what are the condition of the wave requirement which which condition should be fulfilled in order to wave the requirement you should tell these four condition of course voyage duration distance from the coastline 50 miles trading between the port or the flag state and giving all the residue to the reception facility okay now it can also wave of the requirement if your ship is constructed before 1982 and the date is greater than 40,000 ton and trading in a specific area or your duration is in the special area arctic water or 50 miles from the nearest land or duration of 72 hours so see if in the examination they ask you normal so first tell this thing only okay just tell this four point and be silent if they want to hear more specific then you tell that if we are carrying out a voyage in a special area arctic water 50 miles within the land for a ship which are delivered like this before 1982 and having data for in that case it will be exempted so now we know what are the exemption now let's see how oil pollution prevention on board is achieved so in order to achieve the onboard pollution pollution prevention what system is provided the first most important for the machinery space for the machinery space they have provided OWS oily water separator this oily water separator is the equipment which the when the bilge water is discharged overboard before it is discharged the bilge water is processed through this treatment plant such that the water which is discharged overboard having a part ppm per part million should be less than 15 ppm in the same way there is a ODMCS oil discharge monitoring and control system for the slop tank for discharging the slop of a cargo area means whatever the slop is collected after cleaning the cargo tank that is discharged through ODMCS there is also certain ppm requirement of 30 liter per nautical mile after that now in first for machinery space we have OWS for the cargo area we have ODMCS now sometime it may happen that the sludge the waste and sludge is can be either incinerated or can be given to the shore reception facility so if you are doing a long voyage in that case if you are provided with a if you are provided with the incinerator in that case you can burn the oily waste and sludge otherwise if you are coming to a frequent port then you can also give to the so reception facility 
so what are the method on board to prevent the pollution so first is OWS for cargo for machinery area for cargo area ODMCS for the burning of the what waste and sludge incineration or second option is so reception facility so while doing all this thing we need to maintain a record keeping so all this record is need to be maintained in a oil record book there's an oil record book for the machinery space the oil record book for the cargo so in that we need to record this thing after that let's see what are the precautions we need to take in order to prevent oil pollution so now we have seen first earlier that how we can prevent what are the methods we have provided but how as a seafarer on board how you can prevent so first thing is that there is a structural safeguard provided like double hull tanker swash bulkhead which are provided in order to provide the strength and in order to prevent any pollution that like this you can see this is a double this is a single hull tanker as you can see there is a cargo okay there is a cargo is being carried and this is the cargo this is the cargo this is the cargo but there is no protection but now in a double hull this is the inner frame and this is the outer frame the inner frame will not get ruptured unless the outer frame got ruptured so it is preventing any oil pollution here if the outer frame is getting ruptured in that case the oil will come out oil will come out like this oil will come out but if the inner frame got ruptured here even that the oil will not come out because the oil is in the inner frame the outer frame is getting ruptured but there is one more frame need to be ruptured then only the oil will come out so it is preventing the oil pollution now loading carriage and discharge of the oil cargo as per ship operation manual so as per ship operation manual you need to carry properly as per the manual after that you need to make sure that your deck scupper is plugged you need to ensure that you are properly dealing the fuel and and do you need to regularly inspect the oil piping you need to take extreme care in handling and disposal of all kind of oil and you need to have a regular training of a crew by doing the drill in with respect to sopep shipboard oil processing management plan that what action you will take if the there is a pollution so friend in today video we have learned that what precaution we should take in order to prevent oil pollution how the oil is prevented pollution is prevented on board what method is provided what are the exemption equivalent of waivers and what are the applications of the marple annex one friends if you have learned from some thing from this video then please do hit the like button which will provide us the encouragement and please do subscribe and if you are watching till this end i understand that you want to pass the exam very soon so i wish you all the best and please join the membership you will learn a lot thank you